I'm Julie Bartke with this Senate Update. The issues surrounding Minsure, the online health insurance exchange for the state of Minnesota, have been highly publicized and scrutinized. The Office of the Legislative Auditor provided its analysis of the first year of Minsure's existence. It states Minsure's failures outweighed its achievements. Well, the details were presented Tuesday afternoon to members of the Senate Health, Human Services and Housing Committee and Health and Human Services Finance Division. Uh, judgments about Minsure and about the Affordable Care Act often reflect a person's philosophical position or political affiliation. As you certainly know, the Office of the Legislative Auditor does not take positions on political issues. We don't have a political philosophy about whether or not the ACA was good or bad. And frankly, uh, we don't have a position on whether or not the state should have created its own health insurance exchange. But after this evaluation, we do have a position on how, how well Minsure performed in its first year of operations. We think it performed poorly. That is actually a, a very hard thing for me to say because I know, and I know that many of them are here in the room, there were dedicated state employees who worked long hours for many, many months to make Minsure a success, and they continue to do that work. But despite their hard work, and despite the fact that we spent tens of millions of dollars, Minsure did not deliver what was promised. Minsure said that on October 1, 2013, it would open for business and provide the people of Minnesota with an easy, seamless way to shop, compare, and purchase a private health insurance plan or become eligible for a public health program. Minsure fell far short of that promise. Minsure did not provide a good shopping experience for many people who needed insurance and who tried to obtain it through Minsure. Far too many people struggled in frustration for hours trying to navigate through Minsure's website and then waited some additional time to get help from the Minsure call center. In addition, Minsure did not provide the Minnesota Department of Human Services with a reliable mechanism for determining whether or not people are eligible for the state's public health care programs. Having a modernized, fully integrated electronic eligibility determination system was a key reason the state decided to create Minsure. Minsure was supposed to give us what we failed to get from HealthMatch. Minsure did get us closer, but it did not provide DHS, and therefore it did not provide the state with what is needed, and that is a fully functioning fully reliable eligibility determination system. As a result, many eligibility determinations had to be processed the old-fashioned way by county workers. So again, on the question of Minsure's performance in its first year of operations, we concluded that Minsure did not deliver what was promised, what was expected, or what was needed. One of the things that we learned from the survey that we did, uh, our survey of commercial enrollees, is that of those enrollees, 28% were uninsured immediately prior to their enrollment in Minsure. And I think it's important. Uh, I don't think there's really been a benchmark number on that, and I think our, our survey provides an indication of what that impact may have been. I mentioned earlier that consumer problems during the enrollment pr process were widespread. And uh, we certainly don't want to convey that everything about the process was bad, uh, but let me start out on the negative side first. Uh, the enrollment process was long and it was complex for many people. Uh, in our survey, again, of people who successfully enrolled, if you look at the time that they spent online enrolling, as well as any time that they may have spent uh, with the contact center at Minsure or dealing with a navigator, um, that amount of time on average was four hours. It's a long time. 75% of the users that we surveyed reported having significant technical problems with the website. And we heard very similar things from the navigators and the brokers that we surveyed. Some of the application questions were, were very difficult to understand. 
on our, in our report on page 85, we've got some examples of some of those difficult things, and I'm not going to go through them, but, but we went through the process. We actually looked at uh, the very questions that people were, were responding to and, and saw many problems ourselves. And in addition, there were serious problems with notifications of consumers about their applications. For six months in 2014, Minsure applicants did not receive notifications of their eligibility for tax credits. And for six months during 2014, people with pending applications for public programs, and a pending application is one that for some reason is not complete, but for six months, people who had a pending application were not notified that it was pending. And they may have been assuming during that time period that everything had gone through all right. On the positive side, uh, there was more satisfaction than dissatisfaction with the products people purchased through Minsure. 67% said they would purchase the same product again. Now, keep in mind that many of those people bought Preferred One, so they didn't have that option because Preferred One wasn't around anymore. 43% of the people we surveyed said the insurance they bought lowered their health insurance costs. 26% said their health insurance costs increased. The other positive was that this did in fact provide a place to go online and to do some comparisons and to shop. Um, again, you could do that before, but you couldn't do that for both public and commercial programs at the same spot, and you couldn't build tax credits into the equation when you were doing that. I just wanted to make sure that in the report that it's balanced, uh, that we just, uh, you know, you're reporting a negative that preferred one went out, so that might impact satisfaction in a negative way or that the brokers have dropped off and that might be a negative. But there are other things that we do know that have happened in the second year that are positives that would also have an impact on how we might perceive this system and its value to us. So it's just, I'm just mentioning that I think I've, I want to make sure that this is a balanced report, which we have come to expect from, from your office. One of the reasons we emphasize the need going forward for a change in accountability is that frankly we think and we know that the former executive director uh, was not forthcoming to you, to the board, to the governor about the risks that were faced that they knew about, that she knew about uh, going live on October 1. That kind of lack of transparency should not have occurred and I think one of the things that will be helpful going forward is that you insist through these committees, through the oversight committee, through whatever means you have, that you have an honest assessment from the management of Minsure of, of where they're at with solving these problems. I do believe you have that uh, with uh, the current executive director, who I think uh, pledged on his first day in the job to, if he couldn't accomplish anything else, he would try to accomplish greater transparency. And that's been our experience. And so I think, uh, Senator Sharon, going forward, uh, and I don't mean to just say this is a question of personality, but this is in the way the, the legislature and the executive branch deal with each other. So just a high level, um, just your opinion on how much money we spend on the federal and state side. I'm just looking for a grade on how Mincher has done uh, A through F. If you can give me your opinion, I sure would appreciate it. Uh, In Mr. year Chairman, one, uh, Mr. Nobles. <laughs> I, I think I would prefer to leave it, uh, as we said in the report, uh, okay. you know, we are very careful and thoughtful, uh, try to be at least, in the words that we use. And, and, and so uh, we sat and weighed the evidence and said, uh, on balance, we believe that the failings in the first year outweighed the achievements. There were achievements, but frankly, uh, given the amount of money we spent, what the promises were, we simply did not deliver. The failures in this report are well documented. I think this, this report does not document the achievements as well as we should expect. Regardless of the failures, hundreds of thousands of Minnesotans have health care coverage that they, did, that they didn't have last year. The state's uninsurance rate is the lowest ever recorded. Minsure has delivered over $30 million in federal financial assistance to its citizens and has facilitated millions of more in savings due to the lowest premium rates in the country. Minsure has helped bring transparency 
across the state to the price of health care insurance, something that we had not seen before. And Minsure has brought life-saving health insurance to people like Richard, a fifth-generation farmer in rural western Minnesota. He's able to move from using an insurance basically for medical emergencies to, want to actually accessing care on a regular basis because he could afford it and had a comprehensive policy. And in fact, after enrolling in Minsure this fall, he had a lump on his ear checked out and indeed it was a cancerous growth and he had it removed before it became a major medical emergency. I would ask you to put a number on that before declaring failures outweigh successes. I'd ask you to ask the people who've had health care insurance for the first time in their lives if Minsure has been a failure. To accept the premise that failures outweigh achievements without weighing achievements is not what you should do. Um, audits like the one uh, presented today offer a valuable opportunity to look back and evaluate the start of a new uh, state agency. Uh, I joined Minsure uh, in December of 2013, and I can attest that um, the issues raised in the report um, were ones that I saw when I joined Minsure. There were some challenges, and, and uh, the audit, I think, does a very nice job of laying out where many of those are. I would say like any startup, uh, 18 months is a bit of an eternity, and I'm happy that we've come as far as we have um, since uh, over that time period. Um, uh, simply put, we're on a better grounding today, um, and, and it's dramatically better and different than it was uh, over the period covered by the audit. Um, we've, uh, as a reminder, Minnesota's uninsurance rate um, is now at its lowest point in history, and after we finish crunching the numbers from the f uh, open enrollment period that just ended on Sunday, I'm pretty sure that that number will continue to decline, and that's good news for all Minnesotans. Um, when I uh, took this job, I promised Minnesotans three things. Um, one was that we would be an accountable organization. Two, we would have unparalleled transparency. And three, that we would focus squarely on the consumer. Um, I'm proud that we've accomplished uh, quite a bit of that in this first year and uh, uh, since I've joined the organization and, and, and have delivered on some of that. I think importantly, 95% of Minnesotans have comprehensive affordable health insurance coverage. This goes to the core of our mission of increasing access to insurance coverage and providing market transparency. Uh, all these pieces working together have made health insurance more widely available than ever before. Secondly, um, Minsure has made some dramatic uh, improvements uh, to the consumer experience um, in the first 17 months of our operation. In pretty stark contrast to year one, uh, consumers are enrolling um, through the website with relative ease. Uh, our call center uh, volume during open enrollment um, was high and call wait times on average were less than five minutes. Uh, that compares to about 60 minutes last year. Uh, there's a really robust uh, statewide network of navigators, brokers, and other assisters in place to help consumers enroll, and in a much more coordinated way than was the case um, a year ago. Um, as Chair Butner mentioned, consumers are saving money. Uh, Minnesotans who've enrolled in qualified health plans uh, saved over $30 million as a result of tax credits and health insurance plans sold through Minsure. Uh, we have uh, put in place a very strong multi-agency project management team to um, and decision making process in order to set priorities in a way that simply was lacking a year ago. Uh, this has been a really, really important move forward for the organization. And we have a deep commitment to transparency and accountability. We're listening and our partners and stakeholders are informed and engaged with us as we continue to grow and improve. Third, we're conducting analysis of, of the second open enrollment period data and its impact on our budget. As you know, we concluded our second open enrollment period on Sunday, February 15th. We're finalizing enrollment numbers, and I, don't, and I honestly don't know yet what, where we will be relative to the target that we set, but I can say that we made enormous strides over the weekend in terms of the volume of enrollment that was occurring. I think it's important to point out that enrollment uh, numbers are just one piece of the budget question. Uh, there are actually three key factors to look at relative to budget projections. The first is QHP enrollment and what those numbers look like. The second is the average premiums paid. We had to make some estimates around what we thought the premium levels will be. We'll actually be getting data and be able to look at what premium levels people came in at. That's another factor we'll look at. And then member months, and that would be essentially the length of time that people are enrolled. People can enroll in a policy and only stay on that policy for one month. Or they can enroll in that policy and stay on for the entire year. And all of that factors into the budgetary equation. Um, as I said, we have to finish uh, crunching the numbers before we know where we're at. 
Uh, we expect this to be in the next uh, few uh, weeks overall. We'll be submitting uh, Minter's preliminary 2016 uh, budget to the legislature by March 15th, which is required under state law. Uh, like every organization, we monitor our budget closely and on an ongoing basis. Uh, for instance, it's important to the bigger picture how long people stay enrolled, how many people enroll through special enrollment periods, and how many need to make changes based on life events. These are all going to contribute to the complexities. In any case, we'll, we, any, any uh, necessary adjustments uh, we will make to live within our means, and the board will likely uh, make some decisions about that at its March meeting. While I'm pleased that we've made good progress, um, I also um, am eyes wide open that um, there's still a lot of work ahead of us. Um, as some of the discussion was noting earlier, um, there are a lot of back end challenges that we've had. We did a, we focused very planfully and I think correctly this year on improving the front end process for consumers coming through the door. That was broken last year and, and it's a much, much better process this year. But the back end is challenging for a lot of our partners, our health plans, our county partners, our broker agent navigator partners. Um, these are all folks who in the, in the grand scheme uh, want to do well by Minnesotans and we need to make that process a better one for them so that they can assure that. So our focus, um, as we, um, as you know, we've recently been granted $34 million in supplemental federal exchange grant funding to accelerate our IT build. Our focus for 2015 is heavily, heavily on improving those back end function to the system upon which we and our partners rely. Um, we, you know, obviously are going to continue to improve the consumer experience alongside that, but rest assured we understand the, the challenges. I appreciate Auditor, Auditor Noble's frequent mention of the hard work of the Minsure team in the report. Um, our entire team, including our partners at Minute Services and the Department of Human Services, uh, is an extraordinarily dedicated group and uh, dedicated to the mission and success of Minsure. And they're among the hardest working and most dedicated group I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Um, transparency and accountability will continue to guide the work that we do. Minnesotans deserve a health insurance exchange that provides top caliber service and helps minimize the complex process of, of choosing health insurance coverage. Today's audit will help inform how we move forward. Working with you is my hope that we can continue to build on the already great work that's been done to provide Minnesotans with comprehensive, affordable health insurance. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lights. Um, I know Senator Benson has been Go ahead. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and Chair Butner. Um, the fact that you want to claim credit for great achievements just means you still don't get it. The counties, DHS, and the plans pulled Mincher's bacon out of the fire last year and this year. If they had said, nope, sorry, we're not doing anything until the IT works the way it's supposed to, this would have collapsed before November 1st, 2013. So that you would take the comment that basically said the benefits didn't outweigh the costs for the first year it means you don't get it. They did all the work. Minsure made their life harder and it was all foreseeable. It was all foreseeable prior to October 31st and I know you only came in in June, but that at no point in 2013, did anybody say, whoa, 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 we can't do everything. Let's back off and focus on what's essential. Or let's pivot to the federal exchange because we are going to crash. You're testing. There was testing not even done until October 2nd when open enrollment was occurring October 1st. CEO Lights, you talk about transparency, how it's improved. I asked for a detailed budget calculation of the transfer from DHS to Minsure. I asked for it months ago. We get high level spreadsheets that look like guesses. There's no more transparency than there was before. And it's disappointing because it is very hard to understand what real problems there are. The report is honest and straightforward. And I would say most of the problems that are in here exist today. And without a fundamental change in attitude, where questions from legislators get answered, where concerns from the public aren't swept under the rug, until that changes, Minsure cannot 
function the way it's supposed to. As you evaluate this program going forward, to do exactly as you say, Senator Benson, and look into each function and say what's worked, what hasn't worked, and I don't want to lose sight of a retrospective looking report of focusing only on the negatives and saying there have been some good things and let's not lose sight of that as you continue your work in looking forward as to what we can do to improve upon what we have.